So good morning. Um, welcome back. So we finished yesterday. We did day 17. Today I want to do day 18, and then uh, 16. We finished part one, but I couldn't figure out part two. I kept coming up with the same answer, and then when I just kept hacking at it, it finally came up with a different answer, but it's the wrong different answer. You can't click on these. Um, the answer it was supposed to come up with was. 1707 and I got 1765. Um, so I, I didn't even try uh, the, the real input on it. So what we're going to do today is uh, day 18, and then I'll get back to 16 if uh, if there's time. Um, we are currently clean, right? It's all good. Yeah, the test input is just temporary. That's fine. Okay. Advent of Code 2022 Day 18 is called Boiling Boulders. You and the elephants finally reach fresh air. You've emerged near the base of a large volcano that seems to be actively erupting. Fortunately, the lava seems to be flowing away from you and toward the ocean. That's good. Bits of lava are still being ejected toward you, so you're sheltering in the cavern exit a little longer. Outside the cave, you can see the lava landing in a pond and hear it loudly hissing as it solidifies. Um, depending on the specific compounds in the lava and speed at which it cools, it might be forming obsidian. That's just a link to obsidian. Okay. The cooling rate should be based on the surface area of the lava droplets. So you take a quick scan of the droplet as it flies past you, your puzzle input. All right. And it looks like the puzzle input just triples. Let's get the input. 2022, day 18. There's 2170 lines. Um, and they all seem to be in a reasonable uh, num numeric range, I guess. We're not looking, you know, sometimes the, the, we, we end up with numbers that are, that are huge, like millions or billions, um, in order to stress your, stress your computer or test your ability to figure out what, what a good shortcut would be. Um, right. So that's my puzzle input. Uh, because of how quickly the lava is moving, the scan isn't very good. Its resolution is quite low, and as a result, it approximates the shape of a lava droplet with 1x1x1 one by one by one cubes on a 3D grid, each given its x, y, z position. To approximate the surface area, count the number of sides of each cube that are not immediately connected to another cube. All right. So if your scan were only two adjacent cubes, like 111 and 211, each cube would have a single side covered and five sides exposed, a total surface area of 10 sides. I guess this is the test input. Okay. In the above example, after counting up all the sides that aren't connected to another cube, total surface area is 64. What is the surface area of your scanned lava droplet? Hmm. Okay, that seems like it won't be too bad to do, right? Unless I'm missing something tricky. Let's put day 18 in here. go all oh, right I gotta switch around 16 and 18 I can do that um, 17 becomes 16 this becomes 17 and then we're gonna work on day 18 okay so if I do that let's get bacon going here all right and go over here create the file fill the file in with our template save it and then we end up with, come on, we end up with waiting for it to build. Okay, so I think we're just going to store cubes, right? That's all we care about. Um, and it'll just be a hash set of, um, sorry, hash set of a tuple of XYZ. And now what we, what we can do is we can just store them in the hash set. And then we can look up, down, left, right, forward, back, and see if there's a surface connecting. All right, so we start off with assuming that there's six sides exposed for every cube. And then every time we look at a cube, we look up, down, left, right, forward, back. This is the forward, back motion. This is the up, down motion. And this is left, right motion. Um, and if there's a cube on that side, 
we just subtract one from the total surface area. And that should subtract all the surface areas for us. And let's leave us with the amount that's left, which in this case is 64, and in this case here is, is 10. Right. So let's just let's grab the uh, the input. Uh, let lines equals AOC lib read lines. Do I have a utility to read? Mm, I don't think so. Let's take a quick look while I'm here. I have read to characters. I have numbers, but that just oh that does return a vec of vec of numbers. Okay, that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So we just want numbers of i32 of uh, the test input dot text and let's see i don't know it looks like i don't know maybe there's 12 or so let's just say println um this lines len and just see what it says uh we have to import hash set Oh, expected to. Oh, oh, how do I do this? Uh, then maybe I need to say it here. Um, which is a vec of vec of i32. There's probably a better way to specify that. Oh, and then we're separated by character, right? Not by a comma. Okay. So this runs and it gives us. 13 lines. That's fine. Okay, so now we can loop over each line for line in lines cubes.insert uh, line of 0, line of 1, and line of 2. And if we can just put in uh, cubes. Oh, it's self cubes. Oops. Uh, we can debug it out. Hanako, hello, how are you? Thanks for joining. This might be a quick stream depending on how complicated part two is. I think part one's gonna be pretty straightforward. Yeah, so here's all our cubes. Um, we should see these in here, two, three, five, there's that one, two, two, four, yep. Uh, two, one, two is here and so on. Okay, so I think we got it. And now for part one, we don't need to print this out anymore. We don't need to print that out anymore. Part one is basically we come up with um, the number of sides it could be is self cubes len times six, right? Because each cube has six sides. And then we just need to loop over each cube and look up, down, left, right, forward, back to see if there's a cube there. Right for see let's let's create a little side scanner <laughs> delta x y z is equal to let's create an array of um, there's one right there should be a total of six sides to look at right and negative one and positive one for both x and y axis um, zero one zero and then zero zero negative one and zero zero positive one and those are all of our deltas for c and self cubes um, and then for d in delta xyz let pause is equal to c dot zero plus d dot zero c dot one plus d dot one and c dot two plus d dot 2. So what we're doing is we're looking in each of the six directions from the current cube we're on. Let me just double check that this is actual cube. It is. And this is an actual delta. It is. I might have to ampersand these. Then we just look to say if cubes oh, I might have a problem with this. No, no, it should work because it's uh, read-only, read-only. If cubes contains pause, then sides minus equals one, right? And then we just have, I'll put that, sides. And this should be 64 using the test input, um, self cubes. 
Yeah, I got to do that. Okay. Is that 64? Yeah, it's 64. Okay, so let's use the real input now. Um, input 2022.18.txt. And we get a number of 3550. What do we get here? That's the right answer. All right. That wasn't too bad. That was very, very straightforward. So maybe part two is going to be a lot more complicated. Let's find out. Git add source git commit dash m 2022 day 18 part one. Um, good. All right, so day 18 part two says something seems off about your calculation. The cooling rate depends on the exterior surface area, but your calculation also included the surface area of air pockets trapped in the lava droplet. Anshul, thank you for joining. Thank you for following. Much appreciated. Um, instead, consider only cubesides that could be reached by the water and steam as the lava droplet tumbles into the pond. The steam will expand to reach as much as possible, completely displacing any air on the outside of the lava droplet, but never expanding diagonally. That's very clever of it. In the larger example above, exactly one cube of air is trapped within the lava droplet at 225. So the exterior surface area of the lava droplet is 58. What is the exterior surface area of your scanned lava droplet? Um... So how do we determine that there's an interior oh um do we have to like draw a plane through each level and then see if there's like open closes but then no that won't work because you could have like a a pattern that has like concave sections, right? You could do like, let's say that's one corner. We're just representing it in 2D, right? Say so this is a bunch of cubes here that go like this. And there's a gap. But then we have some something that goes like this, right? And then it could also go like this. And this is still be all in the exterior, right? Of the droplet, because there's an opening at the top. Say so that's that's what our droplet looks like. I, I have no idea what the the one looks like that we're given for our input, um, but it could look like this, right? So you can't just scan in one direction and see. You'd have to actually scan to see a gap and then look around oh you know what we could do we could do a like a flood fill or a flood search of starting from a known empty location that's outside the droplet we could do a flood search around and then count how many surface cubes we encounter and then add up the surface of those guys um so for part two yeah, so what we could do, so we'll start at like one less than the minimum. Now, if it goes from like zero, zero, zero to whatever, we could just start at negative one, negative one, negative one, right? We expand outward by one in each of the three directions or each of the six directions, right? And then do like a flood fill around. And then every time we hit an existing cube, um, we can add up its surface area. Um, once we know what surface area. Let me, okay, let me start by moving this outside. Make this a, um, a const impl, you see, 2022, 18. And we'll just say const delta this is colon, oops this colon and it's going to be i32 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 semicolon six right 
six of those guys and do that and then change this up here to be self delta xyz so that should still build and she'll still give us the same answer as before 35 something 3550 okay so now we can use that in part two as well um, oh but we need to know the bounding box and what we could do actually as we go through the cubes we can redo this loop but keep track of the number of sides a particular cube has so we can say let um, I don't know we'll call it outer cube is equal to self cubes dot oh no no we can we can do is make it a hash map and then we can map each cube XYZ location to a side count which starts off at six um, for C in outer no C in self cubes like this and since we're running through them all we can also keep track of our x y and z let mut x range equals um, i32 max comma i32 min and make that for y and for z um, next what we can do is say for d in self delta x y z uh, let pause is equal to c dot zero same line so i can just pull it down here but the rent now now things are going to change a little bit we want to say x range dot zero is equal to x range dot zero dot min of pause dot zero and then x range dot one is x range dot one dot max of pause dot zero right and that way we'll keep track of and we can do the same thing for y and z and these become one and one and two and two okay so now we're, we've basically we're uh, keeping track of what the bounding box is and we're going to insert into outer cube dot insert position six okay now we do the similar logic to what we did up in part one except we now modify outer cube to we can do this we can say for c in outer cubes dot iter mute so we can modify we don't know that's i32 i32 why is that unknown oh is it that smart it's still unknown oh because i don't have hash map okay um let's just do this for now and then pull hash map in okay so now it should know yes okay so now it's mapping the position to account Okay, so now for the outer cube, we're going to look for each direction for D in self delta X, Y, Z. This is probably not the most efficient way to do it. Good monk. Good morning. How are you? Um, if self cube contains, um, oh, we have to generate the position again. Uh, there we go self cube contains uh, position then what we'll do is say star c dot one minus equals one and star c dot one should be the um the count of size for that yeah um what is this Um, I'm going to do the test input first and we'll see what things look like after I do that because I'm confused by what I just saw. 
the description of this pause doesn't make sense to me. So println, um, I should be able to print out the outer cube. Three errors. Oh, right, right, right. Um, it's 0.0. .0. C0.1 and C0.2. I should actually give it some names. Good Monk says, part one of yours was really quick. Yeah, it, it didn't seem like there was a lot of work to do. Um, it was just counting how many sides were not exposed. So, um, so three one two says four two 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 says zero two two two. So what was the what was the thing? Oh, it was two three two two five, which won't be in here. So it doesn't really help me. But we have the information now to do like a flood fill, right? Or we should. Um, let's expand outwards. So x range becomes x range dot zero minus one x range dot zero one plus one like that uh, range and we do that for y and z as well that way we we expand out by one so we know that we can flood fill from the outside so once we expand out the range in each of the three or six directions, now we should be able to just do like a fill, right? So let mut scene is equal to hash set new. Let mut uh, to visit. We'll do our, our usual the code we've written a bunch of times before now. In previous um, uh, previous events of code, uh, what we could do is do this vec deck um, of i32, i32, i32. Uh, equals vec bang of uh, x range zero, y range zero, and z range zero. Right? And now we just say while let sum position is equal to two visit up front. Uh, if we haven't seen it, if we have seen it, in other words, we can't insert it to the scene set because it already exists in the scene set, continue. Um, and then we need to loop over all the positions around our current position and take a look for D in self, delta, X, Y, Z. Uh, and then we just get this guy here. Oh, it's going to be a little bit different though. This is going to be next pause because this is going to be, oh, that's formatted weird. It put a space in there. Maybe I need to update my Rust format. Um, so this will be pause.0, pause.1, and pause.2. Right, okay, so that's our next position. And now we just look um, if let sum surface is equal to outer cube dot get next pause. Now, oops. Oh, one more. There we go. That's an I32 that we stuck in here, right? And we calculated how many surfaces there are. Um, so we just want to save all the cubes that we encounter this way. I guess we can also put those in a hash map. Let mut found is equal to hash map new. And then we can add up all the surfaces on those cubes, right? And we can just say um, found, insert, next pause, surface. Oh, what, what is surface? Surface is an i32. Let's just make it a, a proper i32. There we go. Right? So if we found we found something. Otherwise, we want we didn't find something in the outer cube. So we we'll just put it in the to visit. Push back, next pause. Right, and then once we get through all of that, um, we should be able to use a similar 
Oh, we should be able to just sum up all the sides. Yeah. So this should just become found dot iter um, or found values sum i32. Let's see what happens. Oh, it doesn't know Vecnic. Um, I can't do that. Oh, maybe I have to do from Vec. Okay, let's just do the, the easy way, the two-step way, Vec deck. New to visit push back uh, that. One more. There we go. Okay. Hello. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Do I have an infinite loop here? Um, oh, I, that's right. I want to do that over here, just in case. Don't want to dox myself. Okay, so it's not running. Uh, cargo run. Let's see if we see anything here. Nothing. Um, what did I miss? Oh, duh. We have to make sure we're in range. If next pause dot zero is less than x range zero or next pause zero is greater than x range one or or and we can do this with one and two. This is y and z. One and two y and z continue yeah all right let's see if that finishes love those infinite loops all right so it came up with 146 which is a little bit larger than 58 why um That's concerning. Why why is it so I'm finding all of the surface cubes, right? I'm only looking at the ones that we found that are on the surface. Edible Monad, thank you. Thank you for the raid. Welcome raiders. How was your stream edible? Hope it was good. Um what we're trying to do right now is trying to figure out how uh, where where I'm going wrong with this this code here? And Mad Flash nineteen, thank you for the follow. Um, so what we're doing is we're going through each of the cubes and we're looking to see how many how many how many sides each cube has. I program kids, thank you for the follow. And then what we do is we just insert it into here, into our found list, and then all we do is add them up. And that should be, oh, oh, what if there's a cube on the outside that has an interior surface as well? I would be adding them here. So how do we just add up the surfaces that are on the outside? Um, oh, well, I mean, each one of these is finding a cube surface. Is it as simple as just counting them up? Let me just try that. Oops, doesn't like that. Oh, because I put a semicolon there. No. <laughs> Brilliant. So it's supposed to be 58, but it's 138. That's great. Um, am I doing my flood fill wrong? Let me see. Definitely check the scenes. 
right? We look at all the deltas, we look for the next position, we continue if we're outside the range. The only thing I can think is that maybe I'm calculating the surface cube incorrectly. Let's take a look at surface cubes. Um, where am I calculating? So here, oh sorry, the outer cubes, right? So the outer cubes are here. Hmm. Yeah, this. Oh, this is frustrating because this, this, I don't see what the bug is. I, I have a bug here somewhere and I don't know what it is. It's not this part here because this is just excluding ranges. This calculates the range of, of the cubes. This looks correct. I can print those out. Printlin. Oh, now that now that I, I don't have an infinite loop, I can go back to bacon here. Um, and Z range. Zero to four, zero to four, zero to seven. Um, I don't see any sevens in there at all. Um, I mean, it shouldn't matter that it's a little bit bigger, but I'm confused by... Oh, I, I want all the, I don't want to delta it. That was dumb. I got hung up on doing all the delta stuff. Okay, can I change all these to C? Or do I have to dereference? Um, Okay, one to three, one to three, one to six. One to three, one to three, and one to six. Okay. Oh, and that fixed that fixed part two. That was the bug. I had too many cubes in my thing. Oh, okay. All right. Not too bad. Okay, so let's try it on the real input now. I'll just get rid of that print statement. Um, let's go here. Switch this over to this. 2028. 20, That's the right answer. Huzzah. Okay, so let's clean that up a little bit because I'm doing extra work here I don't need to do. Right? I don't need this found business. Um, that goes away, and that goes away. Is there anything else we can do to, to make this fancier and or schmancier? Um trying to think of function composition here but I don't see it all right I'll take that I'll take that as my as my final answer oh there's a uh, warning uh, 105 we're not using oh we're not using surface we don't care um, so all we care about whether or not it contains key Oh, which means outer cube doesn't need to have the numbers in there. We don't care about the numbers. Oh, so we could just say if cube contains k, right? Can we do that and still get 2028 20, cubes? Um, if, get rid of this and this. Twenty twenty eight. Okay, so that's all we care about. 
So we don't need to even do this part. Or outer cube. All we need to do is get the ranges. Twenty twenty eight. Now we're not using hash map. Okay. That cleans things up quite a bit here. There we go. And then what does Clippy say? Clippy likes it. All right. So that's a nice cleanup. Um, yeah. Let's go with that. Okay. Git status. Git commit dash am. 2022, day 18, part two. All right, that's not too bad. It only took me about um, a little over a half hour. So let's go back to day 16, because day 16 was killing me.